In previous work, we study bacterial cell wall synthesis by building a coarse grain model of the cell wall in which we represented lichen strands as chains of beads, with one bead representing one tetrasaccharide. We propose that in a synthesis complex, two transglycosylases synthesize two new glycan strands at a time, and one endopeptidase cuts open existing peptide crosslinks so that three transpeptidases can connect the two new strands to one another and to the existing network. We found that if the enzymes coordinate locally, this can be sufficient to maintain the raw shape of the cell during elongation. In the work described here, we expand this model to study cell wall synthesis during cell division. During cell division, cell wall synthesis only occurs at the mid-cell. Therefore, to reduce the computational cost, our simulations start with a short cell wall cylinder of 40 glycan strand hoops. Each hoop consists of 400 tetrasaccharide beads. We used this system to test leading hypotheses in the field. First, we tested whether simply reorganizing cell wall synthesis to the mid-cell can cause constriction. As might have been expected, this model just elongates the cylinder without decreasing the diameter of the mid-cell. Therefore, if the basic molecular mechanism of the enzyme complex is the same during both cell elongation and cell division, new factors are needed to initiate cell wall constriction. We next study the effects of a small constrictive force applied at the mid-cell, such as that thought to be provided by FTSZ. In this model, the force causes an initial reduction of the mid-cell diameter. However, as new cell wall is inserted, the mid-cell simply elongates without any further reduction in diameter. The cell wall is expanded by turgor pressure, which stretches and tilts peptide crosslinks. When the growing tips of new glycan strands are close to a peptide crosslink, like the one indicated by the arrow here, the crosslink will be cleaved and the release peptides used to connect the new glycan strands to the network. Any constrictive force less than about 20 piconewtons per nanometer simply pulls this crosslink closer to the strand tips without changing the outcome of the template matching event. However, if a larger force such as 30 piconewtons per nanometer is applied, the strand tips are pulled past the default template crosslink and closer to the next crosslink indicated by the arrow, making this crosslink the new connection point. As a result, a segment of two new units is paired with a segment of three existing units. In this condition, Constriction continues to progress as insertion of new cell wall makes the mid cell smaller and smaller. Therefore, a large constrictive force can be sufficient to drive cell division. However, whether such a large constrictive force occurs in real cells is unknown. Next, we tested another proposed model, a make-before-break mechanism in which enzymes make complete hoops of new cell wall underneath the existing network before breaking peptide crosslink above. For the purpose of visualizing this conceptual model, the cell wall is not under turgor pressure. To test this mechanism alone, we remove any constrictive force. In simulations, where the cell wall is stretched by turgor pressure, the mid-cell fails to constrict. Conceptually, if a hoop is made inside another hoop, the new strand tip will shift forward. In the context of a 3D cell wall, if the new bits start out in register with a template, after about 30 pairs of bits, a skip will occur. 
the next peptide in the template series, indicated by the yellow arrow, will actually be farther away from the strand tips than the next but one peptide, indicated by the cyan arrow, and therefore less favorable for cross-linking. After another 30 pairs are added, the strands will be in register once more and the cycle will repeat. The result is that compared to existing hoops of 400 bits, the new hoops are shorter with only 394 bits. However, turgor pressure expands the cell wall so bits in the same hoops are no longer evenly spaced. Note that glycan hoops are not continuous. At a glycan strand break, turgor pressure increases the gap between the two adjacent connection points from 4 nm to about 6 nm. On average, the strand breaks every 14 bits, so the shift in where the new strand tips are compared to the template strand is more than offset by the expanded gaps. The new strands also break and are pulled forward by peptide crosslinks. The net result is that the new hoops contain the same number of bits as the existing hoops. As the crosslink above are broken, turgor pressure expands the new hoops to the size of the pre-existing hoops. We realize, however, that this make-before-break mechanism could work if there were also a constrictive force at the mid-cell. Such a force would maintain the gap size at 4 nm so that when new strands are added beneath the network, the new strand tips will shift forward. The enzymes would skip the default crosslink and pick a new one for the next connection point. This will cause the enzymes to skip existing bits and make new hoops of fewer bits and smaller diameter. When we simulated this combined model, we found that in the presence of a constrictive force large enough to initially constrict the mid-cell into a relaxed state, constriction occurs as new cell wall is inserted. In conclusion, our simulations show that a large constrictive force alone is sufficient to drive sustained constriction. The presence of a make-before-break mechanism facilitates the process, sustaining constriction with a smaller constrictive force.